Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about eight different ways to generate passive income. We're gonna break down each idea on how hard it is to get started, how hard it is to make $100, and how hard it is to maintain set idea once uh, you started it. So let's get right into it. So what is passive income? If you've ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I have a review on that book coming up, but that book really changed my life. What you're gonna learn is that the rich don't work for money. This is the main idea of the entire book. And what that means is most of us work a full-time job, a part-time job, or a hustle of some sorts. But what we're doing is essentially is exchanging our time or hours for money. So the moment you leave that job or you're sick or you become unemployed, the company shuts down, your income is no longer available. That check is not coming anymore. And passive income is a way to diversify your income stream so that you're not solely dependent on a single stream of income. You're not only just protecting yourself and your family, but also making sure that you can make money while you sleep and eat and you're at the gym and you're just living your life. You're not limited to only the available time that you have to work. So a quick example is like, let's assume you decided you wanna write an ebook. You're a phenomenal cook. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some pictures, write up some custom recipes, and you're gonna put this book for sale online. Well, if someone on the other side of the planet decides to buy your book at 2 a.m., well, you just made some passive income because you essentially invested time and effort into that project, that system, or whatever that stream is, and then you never kind of have to touch it again, right? You can create a different version of the book, you can edit some of the recipes, but even if you decide not to, it's gonna continue to generate cash flow or passive income. There is no way to get rich quickly. That is a myth. It does not work. It is possible that one in a million people will either win the lottery or they bought Tesla when it was at $10 a share and they held it. But for most common people and 99% of gen pop, it's not going to work. So what you can do is be consistent, build systems, go through this video and like check out some of these ideas, see if any of them resonate with you and then just get started on them. It's not rocket science, it's more like A to Z and you can get from A to Z just by putting in the work, the time and the investment into it. So idea number one, investing in stocks. I wanted to start with this because it's probably the easiest, you can get started right away. It's definitely the safest and it's not gonna take a lot of time or effort. You can start with something as little as a dollar and work your way up from there as you get more practice and better at it. Keep it in mind that when you're investing in stocks, do it for the long term and not the short term. So I'm not talking about day trading. I'm talking about the Warren Buffett strategy, the Benjamin Graham strategy. And I actually have a video that I'll link here or in the description about getting started with investing, what stocks you should pick and buy, what platform to use, and we'll cover all of that. For this video, what I just wanna say is like, most people will keep their money in a savings account that's giving them a yield of 0.01 which your money is still losing its purchasing power because of inflation. So the best thing you can do is invest. It. Now, when I say invest it to keep things short, you don't need to actually pick individual stocks, just invest in like a sector uh, ETF, something like in the S&P 500. When you buy one share of this index fund, you're essentially buying a little piece in all 500 companies of the S&P 500. And then you can risk and repeat and do the same thing for the Dow Jones, for NASDAQ, and other international markets as well. All right, so let's break this down into the three categories we discussed. The first one is how easy is it to get started? Uh, I'm gonna rate this as easy as possible. So it's definitely a one star. So it's a one star because all you need to do really is download a brokerage like Robinhood, for instance, I'll drop the link below as well. And you put in your information, fund the account, and you can essentially buy a stock right away. The next question that I wanna ask about investing in stocks is how hard is it to actually make $100 a month using this idea? And if you bought, for instance, a year ago, you bought the S&P 500 sector ETF, like I mentioned, then you would actually be up roughly 40% because the S&P 500 is up by that much in the last you know, 12, 18 months. So essentially, if you had invested a year ago, $2,400 and it doubled, essentially you divide that by 12, you would be up about $100 per month. But you can't look at that way because the stock market, it's its unrealized gains. 
So you would actually have to sell your stocks to then see that money in your bank account and then use it for whatever you would like. Another thing you can do is if you actually want some quarterly income, you can invest in dividend stocks. So you take something like Apple, where each time they file their, their quarterly reports, they'll issue a dividend and that money will actually just be paid out to their shareholders based on the percentage of the company that you own. So if Apple has you know 100 shares outstanding, you own one share, and they decide to give a dividend of $100 because you own 1% of the company, you would get a $1 dividend. Of course, that hopefully you own a couple more shares and the dividend is a lot more than $100. So you get that in your account and then you can do with it as you please. You can withdraw it or reinvest it would be my recommendation. So the last question I wanna ask on this income stream is how hard is it to make that $100 essentially forever? So if you take a look at the S&P 500, it historically has averages of about 10%. So if you were to get to the point where you have $12,000, right, invested, yeah, in the stock market and in the S&P 500, every year you're gonna get about 10% return or $1,200 divided by 12, uh, $100 per month. And if you leave that money in there compounded the next year and the following year, that number is always going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You're gonna actually at some point have to sell those shares to get the realized gain and you actually have the money in hand. But of course, my recommendation is the same as Buffett and Graham, which is just hold it for the long term. So the next passive income idea that I wanna mention is becoming an affiliate marketer. I don't know if you've ever considered this, if you have a large group of friends or just a big group of, of influence, then this is probably the best one for you because I was doing some research and globally, the average affiliate marketer, or at least half of them, uh, make anywhere from 10 to $20,000 a year. You know, that's roughly $1,600 a month. And if you were to ask me if that's a good gig, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Because it doesn't require a lot of work to become an affiliate marketer. It's essentially, you know, you're exposing your audience to some product or class or course, a system. It could essentially be anything. You're just sharing your own link. Back in 2012, when Instagram was just becoming a thing, I created an account called Jesus Centric and I was posting consistently. We posted, as of today, we have like 2,700 posts or something like that, 400,000 followers, and we get a decent amount of engagement. I didn't run ads or do any affiliate marketing on this account for the longest time because I wanted to maintain the account, you know, honest and pure and the integrity of the content. And when you do advertising, it tends to water down social media accounts. So I avoid it as much as possible, especially because the business doesn't need the revenue. I don't need the revenue right now. It's not like these things are gonna pay me hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Every once in a while, I will do one of these ads if it resonates with the brand and I know that the followers will enjoy. And typically what that looks like is they'll reach out to me or DM and I get like four or five of these per month. They wanna see some stats. They wanna see how the account has been growing in the last few days. So if I'm interested, I'll send them the screenshots. You know, I typically will charge anywhere from 200 to for a story post with a swipe up or 750 for a feed post. That goes away after 48 hours. So we never leave any advertised content on the feed because I feel like it distracts people. When they go to the, to the page, they're gonna see advertised content there. And that, that's just a personal opinion of mine. Maybe you're different. I just don't enjoy it. So what ends up happening is if I were to accept one of these advertising promotions per month, I would easily be over that $100 mark. The problem with this is it's almost impossible for you to become a successful affiliate marketer if you don't have an audience. So I got my monitor back on and I wanna answer the question. So how hard is it to get started? And it's not hard at all. You can go to Amazon, which happens to be one of the biggest markets for this, but there are a million different things, right? There are SaaS companies, systems, uh, services. I mean, they, literally the list is endless. If you find something that you're interested in and you have a niche for, I almost promise you there's gonna be some sort of affiliate link that you can use. So to get started, it's not very hard at all, but the next question then becomes a lot harder, which is how hard is it to make $100 a month as an affiliate marketer? And I'm ha I have my phone here with me because I wanna read some numbers. Let's assume that we have a product that's selling for $50 and our commission is 5%. Keep in mind that most commissions are gonna be closer to like 1% or even a dollar percentage. 
like one dollar or just the net profit of that company just keep that in mind when you when and if you sign up to become an affiliate marketer what's going to happen is you're going to have to drive traffic to this landing page or this product and typically these convert at about one percent so if we want to make a hundred dollars and it converts at one percent we're going to need to drive at least eight thousand visitors to that product or landing page then we'll get to the hundred dollars but what ends up happening is like i don't i don't know eight thousand people and i don't know eight thousand people that i can deliver this product to every month so from a how hard is it to make a hundred dollars it's very hard especially if you don't have an audience if you do have an audience then that's extremely easy because the conversion numbers are going to line up they already like you, they are trustworthy of what you provide and the content and the value that you've been giving them. So the likelihood is not only that they're gonna visit that page, the conversion number is probably gonna be higher and you're gonna have more products that you're gonna be able to become an affiliate of. So again, that audience is like key in all of this. So in my case, for instance, if we take the same $50 product, uh, $5 commission, 1% conversion rate, and I'll give you some stats on, on Jesus Centric and the account. So right now we reach about 250,000 people per month and we get about 90,000 interactions. That means they click or like, or go to the tap the, 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 the bio button or they swipe up or some sort of interaction. If I were to assume that an interaction could become a click at 1%, then that would be a phenomenal number because if we took 90,000 people to this product page, then we would make roughly $4,500 in monthly commission for this one you know, product that we marketed. The issue is, well, several. The more you post about ads and about products and services, the less engagement you're gonna have, the more followers you're gonna lose. So that's why one of the reasons we don't do it. The other reason is that not everybody's gonna click. I mean, you're, you're gonna just turn off so many people, but how hard is it to make the hundred dollars? It's definitely hard. And the last question on our side hustle matrix or passive income matrix, well, it's a ongoing discussion on what the name's gonna be, but is how hard is it to maintain in perpetuity that hundred dollar income? And to me, the way I look at it is if you've dedicated the time and you've built the audience, then it's actually not that hard. You can probably create a post or two once or twice a month. And if you have, you know, 100, 200,000 followers, you're gonna make that income. In my case, if I just accept one post, or actually if I accept two posts per year through the accounts, that would actually put me at $1,400 a month, which would be above the $100 a month in passive income. Another idea to generate some passive income is to create an online course. Let's assume you have a topic that you're an expert in, or you're just, more advanced than, than most people. Well, there is a multitude of people who want to learn something that you have to teach and want to hear something you have to say. And of course, I'm not telling you, you need to charge for that, but I'm saying you can build value and at some point dedicate some time into building a course that they're going to learn and it's more in depth and you can monetize it. There's nothing wrong with that. So, if you were to create a course, you can essentially shoot it from your iPhone. You can go to something like Udemy, which is a online learning platform. And I happen to have my course there. So I wanna share with you what that looks like and how much money I've made actually in this course. So a couple of years ago, I decided to create an Instagram course because I had this successful account that was Jesus centric and we built it up to you know 400,000 followers. And I thought to myself, well, maybe there's a ton of people who want to learn about this. So I go to Udemy and I find a bunch of these accounts that are like teaching people how to get there. And you go to their account and they have like, you know, 5,000. But the course title is how to get to 100,000 followers. And of course, maybe they sold the account, maybe it was a business account. Either way, like 90% of them didn't have a significant follower account, but wanted to teach others how to get there. So I thought to myself, well, here's something that I can, I can stand out in. And that is, I have an account that is successful, so why don't I teach people just the steps on how I got there? And maybe it's not even teaching me, maybe it was just sharing what I did to get there, and then maybe they can take similar steps. So the course took me, you know, two to three weeks to put together. I shot it in my tiny studio apartment back in, in when I used to live in Orlando. And what ended up happening is, after three to four weeks, I published a course. 
the course just started doing really well. I actually shared it on Jesus Centric and a couple of other platforms, which probably gave it a bit of a boost, but like I never did any ads for it or anything like that. As of today, me recording this video, the course has over 17,000 students, which is absolutely insane. And people continue buying it like today. And they know that the last update was made like two years ago, but it has decent reviews. It has a lot of users in it. So then they, they go and they buy it. So how hard is it to make $100 teaching online or creating a course and selling it online? That kind of depends like the affiliate marketing thing, right? So if you have an audience, it's gonna be probably pretty easy, but you can also essentially sell your course, your single course for $100 and you would only just need to sell it once per month. You could also go the, the low price point end and sell it for you know $10 and get 10 students or $1 and get 100 students. That really depends on your case. In my case, I wanted the course to be considered something that was high end. So what I did is I kicked up the price to about $89.99. Now, if you do the $90 times 17,000, then I would actually be a very wealthy man, but that is not the case because Udemy will deeply discount these courses. So for instance, right now, as of today and recording this video, the course is on sale for roughly $14.99. So if someone buys it for $14.99, Udemy would then take their cuts, I then pay taxes, and then I have the net profit from the course. But even if I were to reduce that to $10.99, having 17,000 students, it's actually a really good profit and a really good stream of passive income from a single course that just happened to work well. So my recommendation in this is like, how hard is it to make $100? I'm gonna rate it as a two because I don't think it's that challenging at all. I think if you dedicate the time and you create a course that's worth sharing and people talking about it and they learn something, then you can easily make that $100. And I also believe that if you create a second course and a third course, it's just gonna become easier and easier because like in my case, right, I create a Instagram course part two. What ends up happening is I can notify my 17,000 students that I just released a brand new course or I can take just, you know, maybe there's 10,000 of them who rated the course five stars. I can just go to them. And I mean, there's so many things that I can do. I can just go to a hundred and say, hey, share this and I'll give you the course for free if you share it with three people. I mean, like I'm just spitballing some ideas, but the more courses you have, the easier it becomes and you're building an audience as an instructor, which again, just becomes easier and easier. The next question is how hard is it to maintain and make those $100 per month in perpetuity? Well, in my case, it hasn't been that hard. I haven't touched the course in like five years and I'm still making over $100 a month on it or at least $100 per month. There's some months, of course, that I'll make a little more. Some months I don't make anything. But at the end of the year, it averages to be over $100 per month, which is to me, again, it's completely insane. So I'm gonna rate this fairly easy to maintain the money and keep getting $100 a month in perpetuity. All right, so to give you an even better idea, that is start a business and put it on autopilot. So you can't just start a business because if you do something like you invest in a restaurant and you buy the restaurant, well, something like a restaurant, you're gonna have to be there every day. If you buy a salon or it doesn't even matter the business, you're as the business owner, you're gonna have to be involved, especially in the early stages. If you're familiar with the book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, he has this entire system on how do you build a business and automate it and create systems flow for it so that you essentially, you're working four hours. I started this business a couple years ago and it was called uh, 424. I wanted to sell accessories, right? So I was learning about Uberlo and Shopify and drop shipping. And I've always been a fan of trying these different things. 
So I created this business and the business did really well. Within a couple of weeks, I, you know, I built the website on Shopify. I integrated all of the bracelets and started doing some advertising for it. And within a couple of weeks, I was seeing like thousand dollar weeks, which was phenomenal, except it was draining a lot of my time and my energy. So I started, you know, creating systems for it and automating different things and hiring people. And we got to the point where like on certain days we were making above a thousand dollars in a single day in gross profit, just selling these bracelets. Created a bunch of automations on Zapier, hired the team, we were communicating via Slack. And then I had like these supervisors that were managing other team members and they were purchasing the actual order on like a business card. And just like Tim Ferriss, it's like, if the transaction is under a hundred dollars, go ahead for it and don't wait for my approval. And then at the end of the month or even the week, I would just do a consolidation and making sure that they weren't actually, you know, overspending or just doing things completely wrong but it didn't take a lot of time to maintain. This is where I learned one of the biggest lessons in business and even in life is just don't depend on a single income stream or audience stream. And here's what happened. The business ended up just failing essentially because we dedicated so much time and effort and resources into building our Instagram account. And we got up to like 60, 70,000 followers, super engaged and following the brand, sharing the content. And what ended up happening is one day I go to log in Instagram and we were disabled. So I email Instagram and I call Instagram and I text Instagram and I I, I wanted to literally go down to, to, to Palo Alto and like, I don't know, talk to Zuckerberg, I don't know. Um, but I read online that that's completely useless. They wouldn't even let you in the door. So I gave up on that idea, but the account was shut down and a lot of our you know, influencers that we worked with, a lot of our suppliers, we communicated right on Instagram. A lot of our content was on Instagram. So for me to build from scratch would take a lot of the resources we already had. So what I ended up doing is I just dissolved the business and took the money, took the profit, went on to create the next thing. But here's what I'll say. If you do get to the point where you're, you know, creating these systems, my advice is like, just always diversify. That's what the whole point of this video is, right? Is to diversify your income stream. But then from a business standpoint, diversify your audience streams and where your acquisitions streams are coming from. So you don't run into the same mistake that I did. So how hard is it to actually make a hundred dollars when you, when you're starting a business? Not very hard, not very hard at all. Essentially, you probably get friends and family to help you out and make a hundred dollars a month. How hard is it to maintain? Now that's a whole different question because if you build something like Tim Ferriss mentions in his four hour work week, then it's actually not very difficult to maintain at all. And anybody can do it and anybody can maintain it as well. How, how hard is it to maintain and make that money in perpetuity for the rest of your life? I would rate it as a three star, just because you're gonna have to like provide customer service if you have a business. And that just can get really annoying. I, I'm not a fan of providing customer service. So like me personally, I find it annoying, especially because you need to, for you to provide good customer service. You got to do it on the spot. You know, you can't let a customer sit and wait an hour or two. They're going to either block the transaction on your, on, on, on the card, or for instance, they're going to mark it as fraud. All right. So next idea is building an app or a website. And I'm just going to preface this entire thing and say, you don't even have to build it. You can actually just buy it. There are a bunch of different websites where you can buy a website that already has product and is already selling. And you can buy websites that are like my brand, right? Like 424, where it's all done third party and drop shipping. So you don't actually have to buy the physical product. The seller will give you all the relationships and essentially you're buying that inventory on the fly. And then you can do the same thing with mobile apps as well. My only hesitation, I've never done it myself. And, and I'll tell you why it's just when a person is selling a website and the website is profitable, I'm, I'm very like just cognizant of it. It's strange. Like if you have a golden goose who's laying golden eggs, why would you sell it? It just doesn't make sense to me. So to me, it's like that trend is probably over. There's probably a decline somewhere. There's an issue somewhere that they haven't disclosed. And I'm only going to figure that out six, seven months after I've like dedicating and, and investing time and effort into this. But 
here's what I'll say. I started a, a uh, essentially an app. This was a couple years ago as well. And it was called Arpa Cristan Com Acords. And that is just translated to hymns with chords in English. I used to play at our church's orchestra and I played the trombone. And every Sunday we'd have to carry this big book with all of these hymnals and, and, and sheet music and chords. And I was thinking to myself, it was at like at that app craze where people were even saying like, there has to be an app for that. There's an app for that. There's an app for everything. So I did my research and come to find out there was no app for it. So I was like, well, here's an opportunity for me. So I did some research and I know very little about coding. Like I, I knew even, I know little now and I knew even less back then, but I found a drop in the drag and drop builder and I created what I liked the UI of the app to look like. And then I figured out that I could actually pull data from a database and have this drag and drop builder presented on the UI. So then I created a WordPress website and I paid somebody to type up all of these like 700 songs with the chords and like everything uploaded to this website as like blog posts one by one. And then the app UI was displaying them. Every time it displayed there, we created like a category where they could search for the title or the number and it would populate for an MVP, a minimum viable product. It was great. After a few weeks, I found out this thing was actually like a great success. People received it really well. The community received it well. We got a ton of installs, users, downloads. So I thought to myself, you know, I should invest some time and effort into this and then build, build it the way I actually envisioned without my own development limitations. So I hired a developer, you know, we redesigned this entire app. We launched a new version of it and it did even better. I mean, we were getting five, 600 downloads per day. And, you know, I'm sure if you have run an app, you know, that's actually a pretty significant number, especially if it's organic. We didn't run any ads, no promotions, no Facebook ads, nothing like that. It was all word of mouth and people searching for this, right? I guess it was, it was a, a niche, but it was also a need. And what ended up happening is I wanted to monetize this. When we got to three, 400, 500,000 users, I wanted to monetize it. And there was two ways I could go about doing it. The first one was I could essentially just put ads on it somewhere. And the second one was I could just charge a flat fee. Now, because we were getting five to 600 downloads per day, we even got up to like 2000 uh, downloads per day on a normal basis. Essentially, if I could just sell a few, I would get to $100 per month. Even if I sold it for $1, like in a single day, I could probably make that. So what I did is I, well, I did both. I put in the ads and then I allowed the user to remove them, which is super common and still common today. And the app was generating several hundred dollars of revenue per month. The biggest issue was that because 90% of the audience was in Brazil, there was a pretty big currency exchange to US dollars. So then they didn't leave me a lot of margin, right? To pay the developers and to keep maintaining the app. Creating an app or a website, how hard is it? It's actually pretty hard, especially if you're gonna monetize it. I'm gonna rate it as a four out of five. And then how easy or how hard is it to actually make a hundred dollars? I'm also gonna rate it pretty hard because not only does the idea need to be great, but the execution also has to be, you know, pretty spot on. Something like an app, not only was I paying for the currency exchange, but then Apple takes a cut and then you're paying developers and then there's like, you know, servers and stuff like that. It's a very small margin. So unless you're like doing something here in the US, probably if I was making that much money in US dollars, then it probably would have made sense to, to keep the app. I ended up just letting it go because of the third question, which is how hard is it to maintain? And a mobile app is very hard to maintain. The codex and the UI is constantly changing. There's like a million different phones. There's like, there's 13 iPhones, but there are like 1 million Android phones. And even if I'll, I'll add the link below, but if you go through the app, you'll see that a bunch of users still have it. There's like 100,000 users who still have it installed and use it. But even back in the day, there would be a user who has like an, a phone from 2008 Android and like they're saying it that's not compatible. Well, yeah, I, I would have to build like a, a new app just so that they could have it on their phone. 
So it, it becomes very challenging to maintain. So building a web uh, app or a website is a phenomenal way to build passive income, but maintaining it, extremely difficult. So the next thing I wanna mention is starting a YouTube channel, right? It's such a great idea. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are making a ton of money off of YouTube. I'm actually just starting this YouTube channel. I'm sure you guys know that. And I'm not positioning myself as some sort of guru or expert in any of these topics, but instead I'm learning and I'm bringing you guys along as I learn. When I learn something amazing, you'll see a new video come up on the feed and we'll learn together. Feel free to drop a comment below uh, if there's something you want me to, to cover or go do my own research on and figure it out. I'm happy to do that and I enjoy making these videos. So you can start a YouTube channel and I, I wrote down some numbers here about you know, what it would look like and what it would take to make $100 a month on YouTube. So the first question is how easy it is you know, to get started essentially and it's, it's easier than stocks to be honest. You don't, you don't need much, you just need an email address and you can create the YouTube channel. Now, what gets really tricky is actually making the videos. You have to have you know, decent equipment, decent audio, a decent amount of lighting. If you know how to video edit, that's great. If not, then you, know, you can essentially shoot from your phone, but you're probably gonna attract more and better users and have more view time if you have a slightly higher quality than, than your competitors. How hard is it to make money on YouTube? And specifically saying how hard is it to get to $100 per month in passive income? So I did some research on this and what I found is that there's a couple of different stats that go around this. The first one is you need to have a thousand subscribers before you can even monetize your channel. So until you get to a thousand subscribers, you're actually making zero dollars and if you never get to a thousand, you're never gonna make any money on YouTube. Now. Most people, it takes them roughly nine months or 90 videos to get to a thousand subscribers. So it's definitely a decent amount of work. So from that aspect, it's actually very difficult because like this is a long video and it's gonna take me a decent amount of time to edit this and then upload. Uh, I don't even know if a lot of people are gonna watch all the way through. They may just skip around through the, the headlines, but you know, I'm putting out the content. I'm trying to provide value and I'm hoping you do the same. How hard is it to actually make about $100 per month? And here's what I found online, that you typically pay, or you get paid from YouTube about $2 per CPM. So for you to make $100, your video needs to have 50,000 views. If you publish one video per month, that video needs to have 50,000 views. If you publish five, then it would be you know, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. And you would typically get to that $100 mark. Now, what ends up happening is most people have, you know, a certain amount of subscribers. So let's say you do have 1000 subscribers. The people who watch their videos within, you know, 24 to 48 hours is only about 10 to 20%. So if you have 1000 subscribers and you publish your video, you're only going to get about 200 views from your actual subscribers. So then it's critical that you're optimizing your video, that you're constantly growing your subscriber base. Because for you to actually, let's use the 20% number for instance, for you to get to 50,000 views on multiple videos, you're gonna have to have essentially 100,000 subscribers, 150,000 subscribers, and then all your, all your videos will essentially be making you $100 per month. So for easy math, Let's assume you have 62,000 subscribers and you're expecting a 20% view rate from your subscribers. That means that each one of your videos is roughly gonna have about 12,500 views. Um, now, that would get you $100 per month if all of the numbers hold up and you get the $2 CPM. If you're running videos in a different country and considering making 100 US dollars, then that's a whole different argument, a whole different conversation we would need to have. All right, guys. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas on how you can generate some passive income. If there's something I missed, drop it below in the comments. I'd love to, to get your take on anything that you think I probably should be doing or anyone else who's watching these videos. Uh, appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.